Hola, Jerry Sampson here. Juan Roberto Lopez and I have a new continuing education event planned for you, November 14th and 15th, 2014 in Bogota. For the first time in Colombia, Peter Miles is coming from Australia to discuss and debate class two evidence-based clinical treatment. What Peter doesn't know is that we're going to have test cases, cases of mine that Peter has never seen, and we're going to show those to the entire audience. You'll get to see them in advance. And then we'll see how Peter would treat those cases. Then we will see in detail how I would treat the cases. Ha <laughs> ha! And here he is now, Peter Miles from Australia. Hi, I'm Peter Miles. And I intend to whip up on Jerry Sam. Jerry Sam. Hi, I'm Jerry Sampson from the U.S. I. Don't miss this course. November 14 and 15 in Bogota, Colombia. For the first time in your country, Peter Miles and I will debate class two clinical treatment based on the evidence based on excellent clinical information. Let's see what else we have for you. Peter? Hola a todos. Mi amo es Peter Miles, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you all in November, where I'll be talking about controversies in class two treatment with mi buen amigo, Jerry Sampson. Jerry? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to um, speaking with uh, Peter Mills from Austria. Yeah. Uh, that's Peter Miles from, from Australia, Jerry. Oh, yeah, that's right. The guy from the deep, deep south, down under. Yeah, so how's that whole big thing going for you down there anyway. Uh, you know, no one does beg here anymore, Jerry. We use bracket systems and techniques just like you guys. But what Jerry and I do hope to share with you is how an understanding of mechanics and the current evidence in the literature can help make you more efficient in your clinical practice in class two treatment. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you all in Bogota where we'll be debating some of the controversies in class two treatment between myself, yourselves, and the local, local old man, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. <clears throat> old man, huh? Yeah, how about we debate that? Ortho Nathos Columbia. We have a remarkably interesting meeting coming up for you in November. Your contact person is Juan Roberto Lopez in Medellin. Here is Juan Roberto's email address. Class 2 expertise. All of us that have ever treated class 2 patients know that sometimes things work, sometimes they don't, sometimes they work for a while and then sometimes they stop working. What we have planned November 14th and 15th, 2014 in Bogota, is an interesting adventure in class two treatment. Juan Roberto and I are bringing Peter Miles from Queensland, Australia, specifically to speak on class two treatment. This is an evidence-based clinical application by Peter Miles, one of the leading experts in the world in evidence-based clinical treatment. As a matter of fact, Peter recently has completed an evidence-based clinical orthodontics textbook available from Quintessence Books. This is the leading book in the world in clinical treatment from an evidence-based standpoint. When faced with a lack of treatment response, when, and treating class twos, it is essential to have another option planned. Only the youngest professionals treating orthodontic cases 
have not encountered a situation where the class two treatment stops working. What will you do when treatment stops? As long as everything is working, says Professor Lyle Johnston, nothing matters. One of the interesting things in asking this question about what you will do when things are not working to your satisfaction or in fact are getting worse, we're going to present a number of cases which we're asking that you review before the course. These, these particular cases that you'll see next are cases that I have treated. For example, here's an eight year, two month old male. You can make your own decisions about his facial balance from a frontal and profile view. Take a look at his intraoral view and you will notice an interesting class to open bite. Now, what we will be doing during our meeting in Bogota, November 14th and 15th, is you will see these records. We will ask the audience to decide about treatment details for the case. How are you thinking about treating this case? If you saw this particular patient with this malocclusion in your office, what would be your treatment plan? And what would you do if that plan was not working to your satisfaction? Indeed, this boy is a full class two open bite. His cephalometric analysis shows a normal facial pattern with normal forward rotational growth. He's skeletally class two and dentally class two. In fact, he has proclined upper and lower incisors. As far as treatment, when would you start treatment? What would that treatment be? And what would you do if that treatment worked for a while but then stopped working? Would you be thinking about the potential for upper bicuspid only extraction? That would be first bicuspids. Would you be thinking about a non-extraction pattern? During the course, Everyone in the office, everyone in the class will review this particular case. Of course, now you're getting to see it in advance of the course. Then you will see the exact details of treatment. How would you treat that case? Let's take a look at another example. Here's a patient who's 14 years, eight months of age. From a frontal standpoint, what do you think of his facial balance? you can detect some sort of intraoral challenge situation and certainly he has a class two appearance to his face. Smiling profile and again study the dental facial balance that you observe in this particular 14 year eight month patient. An interesting deep bite malocclusion. What would you be thinking about as far as treatment? From an intraoral view of his panoramic film, you see also some interesting considerations. During the course, I will show this case in tremendous detail. All the details in an appointment to an appointment visit will be shown for all of these cases. How are you thinking about treating this particular patient? Again, he has a normal facial pattern. He's not growing overtly vertically we would not be overly concerned about the development of an open bite in this case. How would you treatment sequence the case for this full class two block cuspid and you probably noticed the blunt root morphology pretreatment on the panoramic film? How likely is it that this patient will show root resorption during treatment which will compromise the end result? What will you do if the root resorption starts? What factors are responsible for root resorption and can those factors be avoided? During our meeting, this case will be shown in detail. You will see an appointment to an appointment visit including troubleshooting in the case. Let's take a look at yet another example of a class two patient that will be reviewed in detail during the course. This patient is 13 years, eight months of age. Make your own decisions about how he looks from a frontal view. 
I think his profile view looks quite acceptable. He has a strong chin, but smiling profile, there are some definite considerations in dental facial balance. How are you thinking about treating this rather severe class two skeletal and dental deep bite with severely retroclined upper and lower incisors? Do you think that the root morphology is of concern for either tooth movement or root resorption? This will be covered in detail during the course. So we have a class two asymmetry, far more class two on the right than the left, a severe dental deep bite, and severely retroclined upper and lower incisors. This case will be shown to you during the meeting, including appointment to appointment visits and what I started doing when things were not working to my satisfaction. However, how would you be thinking about treating that particular patient? Yet another patient will be shown during our meeting. This particular patient has a positive history of temporomandibular joint sounds and jaw discomfort. She was in treatment with another orthodontist. That treatment was not successful. Now the first orthodontist is talking about various options that might exist at this point. Make your own decisions about profile balance. This is how I saw her when she came into the office. The previous orthodontist was attempting class two treatment unsuccessfully. This particular case will be shown in detail, including troubleshooting. Here is how the girl looked at time one when she saw the first orthodontist. Not a full class two, a weak class two. However, at this particular time, at the update, that would be time two, she is now full class two. The case has gotten worse. Now, treatment is being considered that might be a compromise in nature because the previous treatment was not working. The first orthodontist is talking about another option. What do you think that option is? How would you treat this particular patient if she came into your office? What would be a reasonable treatment plan and what would be unreasonable? Perhaps you're thinking about extraction of upper first bicuspids only. Do you think that's a reasonable plan? How about her root morphology? Do you think that there's any predisposition to root resorption? Do you think that there are any other issues that should be considered? Converged roots will need to be diverged. This patient is also a mild skeletal class two, not an overt vertical growth pattern, proclined lower incisors. What are you thinking about doing in this particular patient? What would you agree is a reasonable treatment approach versus an unreasonable treatment approach? These are only a few of the cases that we will be looking at during our course, November 14th and 15th in Bogota, Colombia. These cases will be reviewed for you in detail. And what will be quite interesting for you is Peter Miles will have never seen these cases of mine, and I won't see have seen his cases. We'll be discussing these case treatment options in front of the entire group and encouraging you to participate if you'd like to do so. Peter Miles coming in from Queensland, Australia, specifically to Bogota, Colombia for our class two evidence-based clinical meeting. Controversies will be emphasized. Controversies and treatment options and reasonable treatment plans and troubleshooting. Contact Juan Roberto Lopez 
Here is Juan Roberto's email address in Medellin, Colombia. This is an orthonassos presentation in Bogota. Certainly one of the most important continuing education events for 2014. I'll look forward to seeing you then.